Hey YouTube, um, I'm going to try and tackle the question of whether it's appropriate to consider the mind uh, machine analogy as uh, useful, beneficial, accurate or true. And in kind of a Randy Helzerman-esque style, I'm going to present the best argument that I can for considering this analogy is completely false, which as some of you know, I, I do support this. But <clears throat> regardless, I am going to try to give the best case that I can for why this analogy fails completely. First thing to consider is the historical nature of such an argument. Um, it's noted that the, the Greeks even saw the, the mind as a catapult, Sill notes this, and the mind is in, increasingly compared to various apparatus um, in the Industrial Revolution, mind almost as steam engine. and in the in the role of the early psychologists and, and the uh, sort of the the middle of the 20th century psychologists, the mind began to be seen as an intuitive statistician. Now the reason for this is fairly simple because the apparatus that they were thinking of um, that they were thinking uh, that they were measuring they were measuring it with statisticians, and now surprisingly when most of um, most of the work is done on computers with uh, fMRI scans and other such brain scanning tools. It's not surprising that we're beginning to see the mind as uh, more like a computer, that with the increase in technology and other historical influences. But is this analogy um, accurate? Does it accurately reflect um, what we know about neurology today? I would say no. The Torg machine is um, is an artificial. Well, it, it's a it's a conceptual machine which consists of an infinite string of numbers, um, either binary bits one or zero. And the machine can read, it can write, and it can move to the next one. That's all that a Torg machine can do. So it's it's a very simple machine, um, and our brain is. A lot more complex than this. Firstly, the particular functioning of, of neurons um, with their neurotransmitters is sufficiently more complex. Um, for example, the the brain structure isn't um, homogeneous. It's it's not the same all over. There are various different types of brain and nerve cells, and various different types of uh, interactions that can go on between them. Um, there's the thalamocortical loop, there's the polysynaptic loop, and um, then there are, um, there are value systems in the brain which reinforce particular, uh, particular neuronal patterns of firing. Um, the brain, of course, goes through, um, according to Edelman, this book that Zenkat told me to read, uh, which is actually very good. Uh, the brain goes through three stages of um, development. Now, unlike a computer, which is mainly instructional, um, the brain goes through, first of all, the, um, the developmental selection pressures occur when um, in embryonic development and throughout as the particular neurons are beginning to fire together and uh, some of them are actually dying. Now this isn't entirely detrimental, it can actually um, benefit the particular functioning of the brain and is in fact is essential for um, the, the growing of, of a, a mature healthy brain. Secondly there's experiential selection which um, occurs, it's basically uh, similar to the Hebbian law which is um, neurons that fire together wire together. And the another process highlighted by Edelman is um, the synchronization of reentrant loops. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on what these are, but essentially they're, they're massive parallel um, communications within the brain which synchronize um, temporally and um, over a large periods of time. They're, they're very much larger and more stable uh, activation patterns than the uh, experiential development of the brain. 
Furthermore, um, it's the particular noise and fluctuations and the, the, all of these processes together a sort of neural Darwinianism, um, according to Edelman, which constitutes the um, efficiency, the general pattern uh, recognition and the categorization properties that our brain has, all of which at the moment, of course, computers are struggling to do. Um, the complexity of the individual neuron isn't entirely known. Again, as I said before, there are many different types of neurons. There are many ways that a particular neuron can connect to another neuron. There are, of course, feedback systems and um, uh, regular uh, regulatory systems, but um, there's not just one type of neurotransmitter in the brain. And the different types of neurotransmitters um, transmit particularly different signals um, to larger or smaller areas of the brain depending on what they are which inhibit or um, disinhibit particular neurons from firing and this is very important and not very much work has um, gone into this in the area of artificial intelligence so this is certainly a consideration um, so from from a biological perspective uh, the analogy seems to almost fall down. Uh, not only that, but the particular, as I said before, the particular chemical structures of the brain and, and the way that it behaves, uh, the, especially the neuron, the microstructures of the brain, um, little is known about, um, little is actually known about how that comes into being. Uh, so to assume that we can uh, program it on the computer is certainly very far-fetched. Um, we can also go into another criticism, obviously raised by Searle, which is the Chinese room. Um, I'm not going to go into this, uh, please look it up, because um, it's a very important study in, in the era, in a critique of artificial intelligence. But essentially, um, Searle says that a computer is just following, um, it's just following algorithms and there's no understanding going on at all which is certainly worth a consideration. Again, um, following on from that, unlike a computer, the brain has no CPU, no definite memory set, and it's not following any definite procedure. In fact, it relies quite a lot on ambiguity. Yet at the same time, unlike a computer, there is no, um, there is no global map on the brain, no uh, form of representation as such, like uh, th there is no overriding logical structure of the human brain. It's very ambiguous and it relies on a number of different biological and chemical processes, none of which have been sufficiently researched in artificial intelligence. The uh, development of the brain is a very complex process, roughly um, occurring in three distinctive stages and the particular the particular structures of the brain perform very different functions as well so to say that this is an um can be uh, analogous to a, a touring machine which of course only can do three things is certainly far-fetched i will explore all of these arguments hopefully in the next video but I just wanted to highlight uh, the fact that I do recognize some of the difficulties in considering the Turing machine as a uh, as mind or, or the mind as being um, rep uh, representative of a Turing machine. Um, there are certainly some difficulties, and I do fully acknowledge those. So. Hopefully, um, I will make the, the correspondence to this video in uh, a couple of days. Take care, guys. Peace.